Well, we've been doing back and forth since the election um, in, in November, Michelle, so this is just the latest installment. But to um, have me follow uh, Peter Navarro, uh, who in his previous life um, is the author of a scintillating book called Death by China, uh, is um, you know, a, a very important uh, contrast. Uh, Navarro has been an avowed uh, China basher, a, a real zealot masquerading as an academic uh, and now as a, a policymaker, and uh, the, the case that he is making is not a credible case. There are issues that we have with China, and you and I have talked with them uh, about them uh, over the, the last several months uh, on the air as well. But the Navarro case is really uh, a, a real fabrication along the lines of, of the uh, of the book that he wrote several years ago. Let me ask you this: um, You've made the case for a long time. You know the. The president is so upset about the trade deficit with China, and you rightly point out that the trade deficit exists in large part because Americans don't save very much, and we spend a lot, and we have deficits, etc. And so you end up um, importing, you know, somebody else's savings, which is what we've done. But the converse to that is that over in China, the Chinese save a lot, maybe more than they should, because. The government controls interest rates at banks, and so they can't make that much money. There's so few places for them to put their money. They're so worried about having to take care of themselves in their retirement or when they get over older. They save much more. I mean, there's issues on, dare I say, both sides with these countries that have incentivized this disruption between the two, aren't there? I mean, how much more could China do in order to alleviate the current situation? Well, look, your point on surplus Chinese savings is, is spot on, and I, I and others have uh, emphasized this for a long time, and the Chinese get it. Uh, the main um, source of surplus saving is that latter point you alluded to, uh, the lack of a social safety net. So they save out of fear for an uncertain future, and they need to address that if they're going to transform themselves into more of a consumer society. They are, in fact, doing that too slowly, in my view, but their domestic savings rate has come down uh, from uh, uh, a little over 50 percent to the low 40s uh, and is headed considerably lower. They need to absorb their surplus saving uh, to support uh, the consumer-led model. Uh, and by the way, if they deliver on the consumer-led model, that's a huge opportunity for us if we uh, were really focused on trying to get a piece of that market rather than trying to restrict them uh, from our markets. Stephen, how would you do it? Given how upset you are, it seems, about how, how the administration has approached it. What, what I would do, Andrew, is, is really focus on this uh, issue of market access. China, uh, like it or not, uh, is going to uh, shift its model, and it's doing this slowly, from a, um, a, uh, uh, an economy that focuses on production to an economy that increasingly focuses on consumption. And in doing that, they're going to grow consumer demand for goods and services. In my book, I estimate that the, um, uh, the, the, the tradable growth opportunity in Chinese services is going to be between four and six trillion dollars between now and 2025. If we were to get a bilateral investment treaty signed with China that would give us access to those markets, we have the greatest services economy in the world. Shame on us if we couldn't get a great uh, and capture a great uh, market share of that. That's the way to make America great again, not by trying to resurrect industries uh, in, in manufacturing uh, that have long been lost. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.